Can I segue just really, really quick to James, to Captain McCormick on this? I want to hear, uh, it's been on my mind, what happened to his museum, the vandalism? Uh-huh. Yeah. And, and also what wedding gift he got from George W. Bush and Laura Bush. That's been on my mind. So, yeah. anyway, just not, you know, not to switch directions, but I'd love to hear you on that one, Captain. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, first off, let's go with the... Um, um, with the um, the vandalism. So, of course, you all know that we talked about uh, we have a museum. We had to build this museum and, and had to get it funded and, you know, constantly um, staying up on that. But uh, somebody vandalized it. Turned out to be a 17-year-old kid, and uh, we were able to catch him because we've got camera systems, you know. We're locked in here. And uh, <laughs> the... Um, the beauty of it was is that I had a chance to meet with the boy and with his grandmother and uh, spend some time with him. And, and, you know, honestly, there's two ways you can go with this. You know, I can go with the way uh, that a lot of people were saying, prosecute, prosecute, prosecute him as a, as a juvenile, uh, which, which really, you know, it's just going to cause him problems in his future. Uh, or I could potentially get uh, some work out of him. So what we did was is we worked out probably the best case scenario, and that was 24 hours of community service. And uh, in that during that community service time, I don't have him sweeping floors and doing uh, menial tasks. Uh, I'm actually talking to this young man about leadership and about doing things while you're here. So you're not just going to come here and sit and, say, welcome to the museum. You're going to interact with the public. We're going to teach you how to take care of this uh, aquarium. We're going to teach you how to take care of artifacts. And I'm, when you leave here, you're going to have a skill, um, you know, and you're going to have a full understanding of who I am and the kind of person I am because I'm going to take 24 hours, okay, over three-hour periods every week, three hours every week, and I'm going to work with you. Um, and, and, you know, I think the kid appreciates it. Um, you know, um, we've already had the discussion about the military and I'll just tell you that a lot of people are shying away from joining the military. And I would encourage, uh, folks to, to not look at the military as a last option, but you really need to look at it as your first option. Uh, and here's why I tell you this, uh, service to your country um, builds uh, on your character. Now, are there problems in the military because of this this current uh, woke agenda? You know, a lot of people say, oh, I hate hearing the, the woke agenda. Well, yes, <clears throat> this boy is a product of the woke agenda. This boy thinks that it's okay to go up and do what he did and pretty much that he wasn't going to face any kind of punishment because the worst thing I could have done was to take it to court and they would have said, uh, you know, we'll put you on probation until you turn 18 years old. We'll make you pay a $75 fine plus court cost. And that's nothing. What does that leave with that gentleman? That leaves him with, you know, I basically did it. I paid a little bit of a fine. Uh, and this guy's a jerk. You know what I mean? Uh, because all he wanted to do was give me a bad record. Um, so we had an opportunity to correct that. And I think that, that that what's going on now is that they are being educated by the quote unquote, uh, the, you know, I'm just going to say it. We called them shit house attorneys when we was in the in the military, and these are people that think they know everything, and they're generally your same age, never done anything outside of go to school, and they're out here educating these kids because they're watching stuff on on social media. They're watching Joe Biden trip on bicycles and, and they're watching Kamala Harris, you know, make outlandish comments. They're watching the, the Palestinian movement. You know, they're out there chanting this from the river to the sea, not even knowing what it means. And then they're being confused by, well, maybe I was supposed to be a woman instead of a man, you know? Um, so we have all these things that are going on and it's being pushed by this um, by this group. And like I said, um, we have to get that under control. So the best way I can do that is, is to give that guy some community service and allow him to be around a real red-blooded American 
that it's not going to be afraid to talk to him like I would talk to any one of my sons. And I have done so. Um, and he has accepted it very well and uh, starting to straighten out a little bit. Now, I'm going to get him to get a haircut next, and he may not like it. But, you know, we have a dress code here, and uh, and you're going to follow it. Um, if not, then, you know, we'll go to option two. And that's just the way we need to start being. That's the way businesses used to be. So what's the second part of the question, Greg, before I go into anything else? Is there anything else I need to uh, hammer on that? Uh, what you're uh, what you're touching on, and then we'll wrap this little portion up. Other than talking about the wedding present, yeah, and w, yeah, okay. Yeah. But <laughs> I want to wrap this up. You're hitting on a very very important thing, and what you're talking about yeah. is leadership, mentorship of young people, of young men. Okay, it's what Jordan Peterson does. It's what I yeah. do. It's what L Lamb does. It's what you do. Um, and that's the missing link right now is leadership. Going to tell you a very very quick anecdote that applies to this. Um, there, I, I actually took, uh, when I, when I went to school a million years ago, back in Quebec, I took <laughs> a police, police technology and learned a lot of just about the, 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 uh, the police world, you know, the law enforcement world and stuff. And the big issue was at the time was recidivism, sure, which is to, to, to do the crime again. Uh, just, just tragic numbers that if you've been incarcerated, it's like 80% recidiv recidivism that you go back. Yeah. And there was a statistic that honestly, James, it, it stayed with me since I'm talking a long time ago, 1977, 78. Yeah. The statistic was, is that when kids uh, and especially young men, because they become the criminals, young men are, are the criminals. Sure. Uh, if they are confronted their very first time. And this is called this is what Sheriff Lamb calls at risk youth. They're 10 to 15. Sure. And but if they're confronted the very first time and basically basically given what, what we you're sharing, it's base it's kind of a risk slap legally, not getting into the legal world yet, because that puts them mm -hmm. into the legal world funnel and databases. But it's basically teaching them a lesson that it, it was astonishing as st statistics that most people, if just after doing their first crime, if just taught a good lesson at that point and then cut loose, no questions asked, they don't do it again. It's stunning, James. It's it's why you didn't re-offend and I didn't re-offend sure. because of our parents when we were young. Yeah, yeah. But the, the key is how do you accomplish that? How do you do that in terms of a program? And the answer is, I've already written within a book review is uh, Sheriff Mark Lamb's Sheriff Re uh, Youth Redirection Program. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll leave it at that. Val's read that. And it, uh, to me, it was like an answer. And it's yeah. very much like the like uh, you you uh, transformed, quote, court-ordered community service into sure. 24 hours of pure leadership and mentorship. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, and what, there's no value into just going out picking up trash on the side of the road. Exactly. You know, Other the than sheriff making people does, feel I, I good, you know. Yeah, I, it's it's published, so I'll I'll leave it. But what the sheriff does, he does. Uh, it's a whatever <clears throat> program for kids 10 to 15 at risk before they're official offenders, and he puts them to again guidance courses, uh, sure. uh, in, uh, uh, counseling, horse therapy. Mm-hmm. You know, and blah, blah. And these kids, it turns out they're 97, 98% success rate. Yeah. They don't yeah. really offend. And what happens in these kids develop relationships with these mentors. I'm going to be going in as a speaker. Mm -hmm. He's invited me to go in as a speaker, as a mentor to these kids. But they don't really offend, James. And then they become what you're talking about, productive young men. They go to the military or they get a good job and they pay their bills and blah, blah, because you dealt with them the right the first time.